Buenos dias, mis amigos. The age of accountability. All right. Let me briefly describe what this doctrine is. All right. So the idea is that a child is saved. A child has everlasting life until they reach the age of until they reach puberty. All right. Once they're able to have sex then they are no longer saved they have to get resaved all right and so basically uh, they're okay they're saved until they enter into this realm of sexual ality all right once they're able to enter into this phase of sex they're saved. Now once they enter into this area of dirty, filthy, stinky sex, they are no longer saved once they enter into it. So that's what the age of accountability is. It's, it's based on sex. Alright? And so in other words, you don't want to enter into this playground of sex. Once you do, you lose your salvation. Now you have to get resaved. Alright, so this whole idea, do I even have to say it, it, it's ridiculous? Now I want to show you something here. In 2 Peter chapter 3, knowing this first, it's interesting to me because it's not knowing this second or third it's knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust right it's interesting isn't it because isn't this the last days and aren't we seeing people scoffing the word of God and walking after their own lust all these doctrines based on lust now, lust and sex is the same thing right you know that don't you so let's go to John chapter 3 Jesus is having this conversation with Nicodemus and Jesus says verily Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus, he's confused because he doesn't understand what Jesus is saying. So he says to Jesus, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Being born of the water is being born from the mother's womb. All right, that should be a clue right there for you. It's pretty obvious. When the water breaks, the baby comes after. All right, so being born of the water and being born of the Spirit. Right, the spirit is above. All right, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. All right, so Jesus says, "Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again." So that which is born of the flesh is flesh. All right, so all babies are born of the flesh. All of us have been born of the flesh. But that's not enough, is it? We must be born of the Spirit. Right? Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. We must be born of the Spirit of God. Alright, so what these uh, devils teach is that this idea 
Though they, well, they don't have to be born of the Spirit. But Jesus is lying when he says you must be born again. You don't have to be born again. You just have to be you just have to die before you enter into this realm of sexuality. Now, it's interesting to me cuz this same YouTuber preaches once saved always saved. So this is a contradiction to what he teaches. The child is saved, then they enter into sexuality and they're not saved. Then they have to get saved again. See, but if you notice here in John 3, it doesn't say, ye must be saved again. It says, ye must be born again. Alright. <laughs> that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, it, to me, it's a, just interesting. Um, why would you teach this? Well, the core of this teaching, the heart of the teaching is, um, they these people want to say that, well, aborted babies all go to heaven. All right. So, uh, that's not supported by the Bible anywhere at all. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. You can't get around that. But they want to say aborted babies and children that die go to heaven. Now, that's uh, it's dirty, is what it is, because it pulls at the heartstrings of so many people that have lost a child, um, and then it pulls at the heartstrings of those who have had an abortion. And now they struggle to deal with it for the their rest of their lives because they know what they did was wrong. They killed their own child. So this is an effort to comfort those who are struggling with the fact that they murdered their own child. It's terrible. And they have to suffer for it. So, it's unfortunate. What this ought to teach us is that we have a responsibility to raise our children so that they might have the opportunity to be born of the Spirit of God to be saved just like that opportunity has been given to us we have a great responsibility to watch after our children and we notice here uh, Jesus, Jesus often speaks of children and compares them with those of us that are in the kingdom to come. Alright. So let's go look at a couple of these here. And verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he's comparing that age of innocence so where we're eager to learn and we're sweet and innocent and all that sort of stuff. He's comparing little children to what it's going to be like when we are in the kingdom of heaven in the life to come hereafter. Alright? Because Clearly, little children are the most innocent among us. And so we should not forbid them, right? Jesus said, suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. So, 
we want to take particular care of children and raise them up and watch after them carefully so that they might have the opportunity to get saved just as we have had that opportunity to get saved. All right, so we got a great responsibility toward our children. All right. I just I want people to know the truth. And whether you like it or not, that's the truth. Right? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So maybe it'll help to understand that the kingdom of God will come upon the earth in its finality, if you will, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and destroys this world. Okay? So, in this kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God that will come down from heaven onto the earth, where there's a new earth and a new heavens. This happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When he comes, he destroys this world. It's the judgment of God. It's judgment day. It's the separation of the wheat and the tares. The saved from the unsaved. The saved are lifted up. The unsaved are killed. It goes back to Genesis 3 verse 16. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So when Jesus comes, he's going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and destroying all evil forever and ever. Okay? So when that happens, there's a new heavens and a new earth. You, you remember John... Uh, 15 I think it is right where Jesus says I go to prepare a place for you John 14 excuse me I get it wrong 50% of the time okay so John 14 Jesus says I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also so the this place that he's preparing is the new Jerusalem right it's the new city of God. It's in heaven. And that city is going to come down from heaven onto the earth. Now, that's when Jesus returns. right? When he comes in the clouds of heaven, he will destroy everything at his feet. But first of all, we will, we will be lifted up in the air. And then, he will destroy everything at his feet. Because we'll be there with him. Right? And now, and when this happens, then will be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Alright? So once we're changed, once we're uh, changed into our glorified bodies, there's no more death. Right? So, this judgment of God, this great day of the Lord, is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and those of us that are saved are lifted up. Now, all the unsaved are destroyed forever. And I think part of the problem is, um, people have this idea that Satan is a god, I think that's a big problem. Satan is not a god. It's not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. Not even one single verse of this idea that Satan's a god. Satan is not a god. And then also that this idea of hell is this scary, evil place. And uh, there, you know, there's just devils down there, just tearing limbs off of people, and all, you know, just whatever this fantasy world that's not reality <clears throat> okay consider Daniel chapter 12 
verse 2, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, this is speaking of the great day of the Lord, the judgment of God, judgment day, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now, consider this. Many of them, many, not all, it says many. It doesn't say all, it says many. Of them that sleep in the dust of your shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Because it says many, I have to believe that those children who were aborted or died at, at, you know, in their mother's womb, they're going to be spared this scene. Because right now they're asleep and they're going to stay asleep. But those that will wake, awake, some those that will awake, they will see shame and this everlasting contempt because they will be destroyed forever. Right? And um, I don't think we need to make too big of a deal out of it, honestly, frankly, because this is a, just a small point in time in comparison to everlasting life. We think about these, these 70 to 80 years that we're living in this, on this earth, in this world, so that's a small point of time, just a just a fragment that will eventually be unnoticed in comparison to everlasting life. So I don't think it's necessary to make that much of a that big of a deal out of who doesn't get saved. All right whether these babies wake up and they're not saved or they wake up and they are not saved it, do it doesn't matter okay now it, it, it's important it really is to know and understand the word God that it's not the will of God that any should perish but that all should come to everlasting life, right? So, when you killed your child, was that a good thing or was that a bad thing? Well, according to this doctrine, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that you murdered your own child because now your child has everlasting life. If you believe that, and you know it's not true, you know it's not true. Deep down in your soul, you know that's not true. If you if you really believed that, you would go around and kill as many children as possible. You would try to do it covertly, openly, any way you know how. You would poison them. You would shoot them. You would do anything in your imagination to kill children. Because you know if you can kill that child, that child will have everlasting life. You'll, you would essentially be doing as great a work as the Lord Jesus Christ by laying down your life, by sacrificing your life so that all these children that you kill will have everlasting life. All right, but deep down in your soul, you won't do that because you know that's not true. You know that's not right. So you're not going to do it. It's against the will of God. It's against the Spirit of God. 
and it does not line up with scripture and it, it's a phenomenal to me that all these people that teach us stuff they always point to David and his son how David was um, you know weeping he was he wouldn't eat and the, when the boy was alive and he was uh, just in a terrible state of misery and then the baby died and he got up washed his hands and sat down at the table and ate and they were they were uh, amazed by that they were surprised or whatever but they asked him What's, your child just died how, how is it that you're not you know mourning and all this stuff and David says well now that he's dead uh, um, you know um, oh I forget what he says uh, where uh, I shall go to him right I shall go to him but he shall not return to me Let's take a look at that here real quick. But now is now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? Now, there's nothing he could do. So he did everything he could while the bait while the child was still alive. Now the child is dead and there's nothing he can do to try to help that child and so he says uh, now he's dead wherefore should I fast can I bring him back again I shall go to him but he shall not return to me so where's this child at the child is in the grave where's David going he's going to the grave it is appointed unto man once to die and then after this the judgment alright so the child went to the grave and David just simply says I shall go to him but he shall not return to me alright now if anybody wanted to have a further discussion on this it's interesting but I think the main point might get lost if I bring up too much here so I shall go to him, meaning David's going to go to the grave. Okay, In no way is this saying, well, the child went to heaven, so David's going to heaven, or David went's going to heaven, so the child's going to heaven. That's not what this is talking about at all. It's bizarre that somebody would try to use that to make the case all children go to heaven. It's just weird. You have to be willfully ignorant and pretend like you don't know nothing and try to hide from the context of this verse. It's just strange because you know David even now has not ascended to heaven. Only the Lord you ought to know. Only the Lord Jesus Christ has ascended to heaven. He is the first fruits of them that slept. Not David, not his son. Jesus. Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. Alright. And then David has not yet ascended to heaven. Right. Nobody has ascended to heaven but the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright. And so here in 1 Corinthians 15 we even get that written plainly and now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept right for by for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming all right so David and his son neither has ascended to heaven. All right? None of them, neither one of them, nobody, except for the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course we read here in Acts chapter 2, it, it plainly says, 
Uh, plainly says, David is not ascended into the heavens. Plainly. Plain as day. Plain as day. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. Can this goes back to Genesis 3, verse 16. It shall bruise thy head, and not shall bruise his heel. Again, in 1 Corinthians 15. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So when Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. Okay? Now in John chapter 3, Jesus says, Um, oh, <laughs> Excuse me. I was like, whoa, what happened? John chapter 3. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus is the only one. Right? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Alright? So, only the Lord Jesus has ascended to heaven, and he's promised to return for us, right? He's promised that, and he will. It's not David, it's not his son, no man has been lifted up, no man has been resurrected except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so why are they using this? Well, they're just focusing on that one phrase, that one verse and they're ignoring the context of the whole thing in the rest of the Bible. All right. And so you have to imagine now, okay, son, uh, David's son is dead, and so he, the, when David says, I shall go to him, well, that child is in heaven. Well, and then David's saying, I'm going to go to him. He's in heaven. I'm going to him. So therefore, all children go to heaven. Because David, he, he's going to heaven. <laughs> well, you could say, let's do this. When David says, I shall go to him, well, let's say that, he, that his son went to Mars. Well, and now, well, that means David's going to Mars. Where are you getting this idea that his son is going to heaven? What, you think David is going to bypass the grave? You think he's bypassed the grave? He never went to the grave? And it doesn't make any sense at all. You're willfully, you're ignoring logic, willfully. Ignoring logic. Because you know it's appointed unto man once to die, then after this the judgment. So you know David went to the grave. And you think about, oh, how evil it is to say that these children are going to hell. Well, Jesus went to hell. Now, you're making too much out of this idea of hell. You're making it this fantasy land that, that's worse than God. That's more powerful than God. You're making this out to be some sort of alternate kingdom. Alternate superpower. And it's not. It's nothing. Hell is nothing, and hell is going to be done away with. Yeah, so, hell has no power over the, those of us that are saved. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You that are born of God can go to hell and swim around for days, and it won't affect you at all. You know, this idea that you go to hell and you and you smoke dope and party with the devil and all that, that's not, that's fantasy land stuff. That's comic book stuff. It's not reality. All right. So, the Lord Jesus, he went to the belly of hell three days and then rose back to life. Hell doesn't have any power over him or those of us that are saved. Why make it out to be something that it's not? Right? 
And whether it's the grave, or whether it's the hell, whether it's the dirt, whether it's under the ground, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it's not like different categories of the afterlife. Every soul that has died is asleep. Period. They don't know nothing. They don't do nothing. They are sound asleep. So why are you making a big deal out of, of nothing, really? So, it's, uh, anyways, uh, it, to me it's just ridiculous. All you're doing is teaching young people to kill their child. Well, imagine you're a young girl, 16 years old, and you got Planned Parenthood and all these um, other kids and uh, uh, people on TV are telling you, well, just get an abortion. Just get an abortion. And then you turn on this video right here, and this guy says, oh, your baby's going to heaven. Oh, then you think, you're just a young girl. You think, yeah, my baby will go to heaven. I'll kill it. And so she goes and kills her child. And then for the next 60, 70 years, she's tormented all the days of her life knowing that she killed her child. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not putting, I don't think you're putting any thought into this. People are going to suffer because of this doctrine. People are suffering because of this idea that all children go to heaven. You just kill your child and, and that child will go to heaven. Meanwhile, for the rest of your life, you suffer. And all the while, none of it, it wasn't true. You're going to find out. You'll find out that it's not true. That Jesus is true. And Jesus is right when he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Ye must be born again. Alright, so that there's that aspect. It's interesting, right? It's interesting. It's an interesting conversation. And then, of course, um, oh, what else did I want to bring up? There was something else. Give me a second here. This idea that, uh, where was I going to go? Let me go back. And, uh, so, uh, this, this mother, she, she thinks, uh, I'll just kill my child, right? And, uh, she goes ahead and kills that child. Rather than giving that child life, she gives that child death. And rather than giving that child an opportunity To be born of the Spirit of God. She kills her child. It's terrible. It's terrible. Right? It's terrible. That's a terrible thing. Alright. So I think there was there was another give me a second here. There was something else I wanted to touch on. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, I think it was a minor, minor point about something. 
just a minor point about something. No big deal. If it was that important, I'd remember it. Of course, my, my fear is that I'm going to remember it 10 seconds after I stop this video. So I was going to end on that. I might just as well end on this. Might as well just end on this. Let me just touch on Matthew 18. Uh, Except you be converted and become as little children. Right? So when we are born of the Spirit of God, we are as little children because we are children of the Most High. Right? We are children of God. We are children of God. And so you consider child how innocent obedient respectful they are so also are we to be obedient respectful innocent and think of a child how a child is full of joy all the time so also ought we to be full of joy all the time now you think of the life to come hereafter, we will be full of joy all the time. There will be no sorrow, no crying, no pain, and no death. We will be full of joy all the time. So also ought we now be full of joy. Now, of course, that's not going to happen, you know, in this life, in this world, in this body, right? We're going to go through the whole spectrum of sorrow and joy. But know that our hope is in joy, peace, and love, right? Alright, so, uh, anyways, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm not sure. Not sure. There was one other point that I was going to make, but I'm not sure. Not sure what that was going to be. Not sure what that was going to be. So, I might as well end it now. Anyways, just consider you know if you just took this one verse that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit that alone destroys this idea that you can kill children and there's nothing more evil wicked in this world that you could teach than this idea of an, a, the age of accountability. It's the most horrible thing any man could ever teach. It's terrible. It's sad. Oh, it, it came to me. Holy oh, God. I almost forget. Let me get it. Let me pull it up. Finally. Boy, oh boy. Well, when you're old like me, it takes a while to remember stuff. There's a prophecy in Luke 23 about this exactly. All right, so and you have to understand really that this world today is crazy. It's insane. People are out of their minds, right? And when they're teaching, "Hey, kill your child, or your child go to heaven," you know they're out of their mind, right? But Jesus. He per he saw it. he knew he knows he knows this world that we're in and he talks specifically about this and when they're walking him away he's got a great great big following and they're they're all weeping and very sad and they're they don't want to see him go. 
right? And there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. That they didn't want him to go. They loved him dearly. They did not want him to go. And so they're wailing and lamenting. They're sad and full of, full of uh, tears and sorrow. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time is coming, which means this time that we're in now. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, happy are those that are barren. Jesus is saying, weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming which they shall say, blessed are the barren. This is not a good thing. You understand that, right? This is very sorrowful. That's why Jesus is saying, weep for the days are coming when they shall say kill your children have an abortion to happy are those that kill your baby weep for them weep for us weep for our generation for our time we see it more now than ever before don't we Jesus is prophesying he's predicting the very thing that we're seeing today for behold the days are coming in the which they shall say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck so this this is the world that we're in they're teaching don't have children don't have children don't have children and when you get pregnant get rid of it kill it kill it kill your child kill 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 your child kill your child and then you got clowns like this saying oh well, that's okay to kill your child yeah your child going to heaven it's okay kill it kill it kill 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 this is not the will of God this is evil you don't you know I mean, don't you know that these young ladies, young girls that are having abortions, they will, they suffer. They are tormented all the days of their life because they killed their child. It's terrible. And you're encouraging it. It's very, very sad. Very, very disappointing. It really is. And this is exactly what Jesus was talking about exactly when he was being led away to his death. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. And that's the world that we're in now. It's terrible. Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, please, if you want to have some discussion on this, I mean, let's talk about it, man. What are you afraid of? Right? What are you afraid of? You know, what are you going to tell me? What are you going to tell me? I'm not afraid of nothing. What are you afraid of? Huh? Think about it. Let's talk about it. It's important. It really. It's how could it, how could this not be important? How could this not be an important topic? 